Having Typekit in Adobe Captivate is excellent, but what if you don't have a Creative Cloud license and want to offer your clients something more than just the web safe fonts? You, of course, can choose any custom font that you have installed in your system. However, once you publish your e-learning course, what the learner will see is some other font that's installed on their device, probably something boring like Times New Roman. All that effort that you made in selecting an exciting and fresh font will be lost. Stephen Warwick um, has come up with a solution, and let me just share with you um, the link to his um, blog post on the Adobe eLearning community. Uh, he wrote this back in the, in the spring, but of course, uh, until now, I haven't had a reason to use it. And uh, it is something that jumped out at me at the time, and I thought, I'm going to bookmark this. And I've saved a bookmark for this particular blog post for later use. So it's all laid out here for you here to read, but I'm going to walk you through the process today as well. Let's first of all go to um, Google Fonts, where you can select any sorts of uh, custom fonts that you might be interested in. Uh, the web address for Google Fonts is simply fonts.google.com. And from here you have uh, an assortment, uh, I believe it's literally hundreds of fonts that are available to you that you can use uh, in your web-based projects um, as much as you wish. There's no limit and no cost associated with it, which makes it even more appealing. I've got uh, a very simple project that I've started here and I'd like to replace the fonts just to make it a little more dramatic. So I've already selected some fonts that I'm interested in. I want to use the Anton font for my titles. And here it is here. I'm just going to click the plus icon next to this particular font. And you'll see down below that that font family has been selected for me. Uh, the other font that I have come up with is called Open Sans. So I've got those two selected. I'm going to click on this uh, this item down here and you can customize this. I'll point this out that you can customize this, uh, especially for the Open Sans font. It really doesn't require customization for Anton, but you can see there's a whole bunch of varieties available for Open Sans. Uh, you might want to choose different uh, uh, lighter styles or bolder styles or semi-bold as needed. I'm going to stick with just regular for now and perhaps I'll just add the uh, italic version of that. Now you'll notice the load time does go up. So the more font variations that you include in your selection, the longer it will take to load. This is listed as moderate, so I think I'm probably okay. I'll go back to the embed tab. And the information you need to capture here is this link right here. So I'm going to copy all of this embed code. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste it into uh, Notepad for the time being. Because I'll need that a little bit later on. In the meantime, I'll just minimize that. What's important though is I also need to download these fonts because of course uh, while I can reference the fonts at the beginning of my e-learning project, I need to work with them and apply them to the various elements within my e-learning project. So we're going to need local copies of those. Uh, it's prompting me to save that file. So we're going to save it. And it saved it to my downloads folder here. Now all you need to do is unzip this file that's been downloaded. And we'll select Extract All. Maybe a slightly different process for Mac users. And once this has been unzipped, we can go into the resulting folder and you'll see a folder for both of the two icons uh, that we've downloaded. So let's start with the Anton icon. From here, you'll see a file uh, amongst other uh, options, but the one you're looking for is a TTF file extension. TTF stands for True Type Font. And I'm going to right click on this and choose install. And that's going to install this font into my system fonts folder for me. Go to the other font, open sans, and you'll see there's a bunch of variations here. Uh, in this case here, I don't need to actually install all of them, but you can if you wish. 
I'll just select them all for now and we'll choose the same thing install and it will install all 10 of these fonts in this case to my system folder for fonts. So I can close these windows down. I won't need those anymore and I can actually close this browser window down. Uh, let's go back to uh, Stephen's uh, blog post here and you'll see a second entry where he's taken the example link that uh, or embed code that uh, he's provided or that is provided from Google Fonts and made some modifications to it. So I'm going to copy his um, his embed code here, his script. Uh, this is going to run a little bit of JavaScript that will add the appropriate embed code for your fonts at the beginning of your e-learning project. And I'll show you what that looks like right now. So we're going to copy this. We're going to open up that notepad file. And I'm just going to paste his example code in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the code for the Anton and Open Sans font. We're going to copy that. And uh, what I'll do is I'll paste it right over top of the selection that Stephen had in his uh, blog post here. And now we have um, a complete JavaScript code that we're going to copy. I can minimize this now. I'll minimize that for a moment. And we'll go to my e-learning project here. And on the very first slide, um, we're going to go to the uh, slide properties panel under the actions tab. And we're going to select on enter execute JavaScript. Now we're going to open the script window by clicking on the script window button. And we're going to paste that code into the window and click OK. Uh, you want to make sure that, of course, it's in the current window. And depending on how your slide works, you may wish to check or uncheck the continue playing the project. In this case, I'm going to uncheck it and allow users to click next uh, when they're ready to continue. Now, of course, we need to apply those fonts to our e-learning project. So let's select Google Fonts here as an example, and we're going to change that to the Anton font, which will give it more impact. I might make it a little larger too, just so it really jumps out at you. And we're going to do the same thing to this, uh, this quiz question slide here. I'm going to choose the Anton font and we'll uh, I'm going to select my question and we're going to choose open sans and we're going to stick with regular it comes up with light by default we're going to go with regular here and 22 point is fine and we'll select all of our answers as well and do the same thing to those so open sans is the google font that we've downloaded and choose the regular and you know i'm just going to make that 22 so it's the same as the uh the, the question itself so we're pretty much good to go. So let's uh, let's do a preview of this. Now, of course, when you pre preview this project, this font is installed on your system. So you can expect this to work exactly as you normally would with any other font, and you'll be able to see the font and it will work fine. Uh, we'll just do a quick preview so you can see for yourself. Yep, that looks about right. And let's look at the next slide. Yeah, so there's our custom uh, Open Sans font as well as the Anton font in the title. Looks perfectly fine. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload this to my web server and we'll see if that still shows up as the correct fonts uh, once we're viewing it on the web. So you can see here that um, the Anton font, even though it's not installed on my iPad mini, it's very clearly the Anton font that we just installed on my desktop computer. And if I go to the next slide, you'll see not only the Anton font at the top of the page, but Open Sans is the new font that's going to be used for the question itself and, of course, the answers. 
So again, I want to thank Stephen for coming up with a great solution for using web-based fonts in Adobe Captivate. If you'd like to check out uh, Stephen's website, it's uh, elearningocean.com. And of course, you can follow Stephen on Twitter at hdecisions. You can find him there. Uh, Stephen is certainly available for consultation. Uh, if you're looking for someone to uh, help you design and develop e-learning that goes a little beyond the advanced actions and into the JavaScript world, uh, Stephen's definitely your guy to check out. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com, follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.